The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618 the trader's edge now steve rhodes good afternoon folks steve rhodes coming oh wait that's the uh, that's the one o'clock uh, update but uh welcome to the june 6th the magical Monday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is tossing at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During the next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking and send me an email. Now, send it to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any, in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, you got a uh, market that is trading the upside. All the U.S. indices trading up. The Dow's up 48. The S&P 17. Nasdaq 55. Russell 5. Semis 3. Trendy's up 149. Light Sweet Crude is trading out at uh, 118.47 off 40 cents. Natural Gas up 81 pennies, trading at 933. Gold is uh, off six bucks, trading at 1843. Silver up 18 cents. The 30-year Treasury trading out at 136.25. That's off one point and a. 11 ticks. Lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside, you got Google, 53 bucks, followed by Shockwave Medical, 20 bucks. Generac Holdings up 16. Not, uh, not, to, not a big surprise there. We had a big super soaker event here in Florida over the weekend. If you were in the uh, southern portion of the state, doesn't matter whether you're on the west coast or the east coast, it was a super soaker. You've got um, Mercado Libre, M-E-L-I, that's up 16 bucks, that's 2%. To the downside, leading the charge is Regenerant, off 28 bucks. Q2 Holdings off 8, Murphy is off 8, Thermo Fisher down 7, um, Praxis Precision Medicines off 6, that's 75%. That is getting taken to the cleaners out there. So let's begin. I hope everybody had a great weekend out there. Um, we finally did dry off about uh, late in the evening on Saturday and in yesterday's uh, kind of, uh, you know, just a little bit of cleanup, so to speak. But uh, let's go clean up these markets. Where do we want to start? Let's start with um, let's start with our four daily equity future contracts out here. Now, there is a new profile attempting to form that is inside the NQ really suggest that we should uh, prepare for a consolidation if this takes hold. Why does Stevie say that? Because the new profile that is attempting to form, by the way, support 12308, resistance 12945. The center is at the uh, 12, sorry, is at the 12563 area. So the reason I say it looks like it's just a get ready for a consolidation market is because this profile formed within the prior daily profile, also with inside the prior weekly profile out there. So we may just begin to more day trading than any kind of trending market. But uh, time will tell. We'll see. You've got the and I suppose that how, here's how I would uh, frame it. The NQ, assuming that this new profile, whether this new profile takes hold or not. Because the NQ now has resistance at 12,945 and 12,973. The latter was the top of the weekly profile. The price closes above 12,973. Then price is going to head higher in the other equity future contracts, or should head higher. Now, the price target in the ES mini was all the way up at 43.54. Not undoable at all. Uh, however, it's going to need the participation and help from the NQ. 
the Dow if the NQ can take out those highs. And I'm not saying that it's going to. I'm saying that if it can, here's what you would prepare for. A run in the Dow up to 33,964, even potentially 34,930. Now, the Russell 2000 is trading above the top of its daily profile, as is the Dow Equity Future contract right now. But the Russell 2000 has been above the top of its daily profile for four or five sessions out here. So it is signaling to an eye that she really wants to make a run for the 1944 level. Is there anything else that we can glean from these daily time frame charts here where I've also got the weekly profiles? Not that I see at the uh, moment out there. If we take a look at that uh, spot volatility index, so, so we've got the, a market that is, well, first, let's not start there or, or go there next. Let's go to the New York Stock Exchange. We could take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. Top panel is the advanced decline oscillator reading. So the markets are working off an overbought condition out here. In the case of the New York Stock Exchange, it's advanced decline oscillator. That is the difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Whew, it is a mouthful out there. Nonetheless, that the difference, that oscillator, got up to a reading of 337 plus. Now, that is a very high reading. What is a very high reading? In fact, the, the most recent high reading would have come back in June of 2020 up at 326.37. And then prior to that would have been up on um, April 9th, uh, 2020. And that was up in the 341 level. So very lofty level. Now, that is actually a strong, positive, longer term for the New York Stock Exchange. Now, longer term, I don't know if that means next week, next month, next year. But uh, that is really strong out there. But when you get up to that level, you've got to work off those conditions. So what we're seeing right now, and maybe the profile that is trying to get established inside the NQ, where Stevie said that's a bit of a consolidation, take a look at just last week's action out there. You had a day up, a day down, a day up, a day down, and so forth. Um, so, you know, just, uh, just some sideways action out here. And that's helping, helping to work off this overbought condition. But look, anything above plus 150, at 150 in the advanced decline oscillator is an overbought territory. We're still at 157.61 out there. So it's got to work off those conditions or should work off those conditions out there. But longer term, it's a very large bullish message. Now, is it going to work itself off to the downside in a significant way? At the moment, at 1.13 in the afternoon, the message there is no. What do you mean, no, Steve-O? No, because that spot volatilix is still below its 50-day exponential moving average. 50-day is at 2707. The print of the spot volatilix is at 2544. Yes, it's above Friday's close out there, but still, as long as it stays below that 50-day exponential moving average, the market shouldn't get too wild to the downside. So what are the markets doing? Well, it sort of means that what you and I need to do, it doesn't sort of mean, it means we need to go drill down and uh, take a look at what's going on on the uh, multi time frame charts uh, that typically deal with, uh, or the ones that I'll pull up, are the intraday time periods. But before we do that, the importance of the 50 day exponential moving average out there really is shown right here. Here we go. These boxes, yellow and green, show you the time periods when price is trading above or below the 50-day exponential moving average. Now, you'll hear many people on the talk show medias talking about the importance. In fact, you'll hear it other places. You know, if a spot politics is at 40 or 50, that's some kind of meaning. Let me tell you the meaning. Where is that trading relationship to the 50-day exponential moving average? Go back to 2008, 2009. When price was above or below, it followed along this guideline right here. Right now, that spot politics is below. It's 50-day exponential meeting. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's uh, before we drill down into the uh, multi time frame uh, charts for the uh, equity futures out here. Let's just take a look at what's going on in the index ETFs. This has 118. So we've been effectively been trading for four hours. Volume is a light. To say light, of course, it is summer. So we expect light volume, but uh, no push really to the downside. You've got uh, volume inside the spies, 29 million shares. Now, on Friday, as price was pushing lower, it was 71 million shares out there. So you've got a new profile that has formed out here a couple of days ago inside the spies. By the way, the support level there, 405.25, resistance 417.44. In the NQ, volume a little bit better. Uh, to the downside, I suppose. 33 million shares so far. On Friday, it was 60 million shares. So still lighter than what we saw on Friday out here. If we take a look at the uh, Dow Diamonds, just lethargic as can be. Um, you've got uh, volume today of 1.2 million shares. On Friday, it was pushing lower with 4 million shares out there. And finally, the Russell 2000, which is actually pushing higher, not lower out here. And it's got volume of 13 million shares. Last time it was pushing up here was June the 2nd. It had 24 million shares. So light on its push higher, light and the other index ETFs on their push lower. So what's going on inside the uh, sectors that make up the S&P 500? Great question. Let's go take a look at those charts out here. To begin with, we take a look at the XLK, the number one sector inside the SLP 500, which we can see earlier in the day got up to test a brand new profile, resistance, the top of the profile. Not out of my data box, but that looks like that is at 142.06, support 137.97. Uh, if we take a look at the XLV, trading into the top of its daily profile, 138.86, so resistance holding there. We're obviously resistance inside the XL key holding, XLK. XLY is a new profile, 156, 157.69 is top of it, and to the downside, 146.85 is support. No breakout there. The financial sector, the XLF, is in breakout mode. What I mean by that is we are above, or it is above, for the last three trading sessions, above its bearish structure daily profile. Now, it's trading into a prior swing. That was the May 31st level. And uh, we're doing that on lighter volume out here. But still, volume, small volume, it's only one aspect. Only one 
aspect of the uh, marketplace out there, but still not enough volume to push this thing at this stage here over its swing from May 31st. But the XLF is certainly bullish out here. The XLC, the communications sector, struggling at resistance, the top of its daily profile, as is the industrial sector. We can see how prices hit that. It's found resistance in the consumer staples area. Resistance is old support. The bottom of the daily profile, 74.42. The energy sector attempting to take out the top of its daily profile. The real estate sector doing the same, but uh, trading below it. The utility sector is below the top of its daily profile there. The uh, material sector is bullish. It is trading above the top of its daily profile. So we've got uh, two of the sectors are trading above the top of their profiles. That's the financial sector and the materials sector. The uh, utilities trying to break out above that level. Um, the energy sector is potentially above the top of that profile. What we're not seeing is anything below the bottom of the uh, profiles out there. So that says, you know what, Stevie, let's do this. Let's go take a look at uh, where we're at with regard to with uh, market breadth out here. So I'll get uh, those uh, set up on our uh, system here so we can take a look at what the market breadth looks like. But let's go to Brent in Martinez, California first. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? How was your weekend? I'm doing great. See, I had a real nice weekend. We had a, um, a retirement party for a good friend of my wife that's a, you know, a fellow teacher that had put in 34 years, and she retired oh. after this you know, school year. So that was a, a good time and had nice weather for it, and it was just a, a good get-together. Ah, oh, that's great. That is that's uh, 34 years. That's a, that is dedication to a uh, field, so that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, glad glad that you had a good time. Glad that you uh, were a part of that uh, celebration. Um, so, you, uh, what what is your specific question today? I wanted to follow up on a conversation we had, uh, not this last Friday, but the Friday before, about this general market question. And I guess probably the easiest way to pose the question is, um, and I know it's one that's not the easiest thing to answer, but at least your take. I mean, here we're you know basically halfway into the year, and and uh, I know you've talked about. On the longer term, you know, it's being in that bar nine and just some things that tend to be a little more, you know, bearish, <clears throat> excuse me, negative. And so I guess my question is to you, do we have a better chance of going to the March 2020 lows or to going up and making new highs? That's my question for you. Which index? Which index or equity future contract? Oh, just you, you take any of the major indices. You pick. Oh, I'd take the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ. Okay. So uh, let me see here. Let me uh, do this. And what I'm going to do, the reason why I wanted you to ask was because I've got these different templates that are set up. And so I'd rather just uh, take a look at what you're interested in looking at. And so I'm getting those up on our screen right now. And we'll change over to them. We'll go to the NASDAQ. So we're just going to, we're going to interpret, Brent, the message of the uh, charts out here and let them tell us what the likelihood is. So we'll switch over to those. In the upper left-hand corner, you should see the NDX 100 from the yearly standpoint. And what we can see here is that the NDX 100 actually has traded below the, uh, well, first, this is generating, which is hard to do out here. It, uh, it's generated one of my Roach Mintum indicator tops on a yearly basis. It's actually the first one out here. Of course, the year is not over, but we have a bearish engulfing candle. Price did trade below last year's low out there. The NDX 100, the last time that it traded below last year's low, it actually traded below a prior year's low, was... This is how far back we've got to go on a yearly basis was back in 2008. Uh, does that mean anything? Yeah, it might mean something out there. Um, but uh, so right now, the yearly chart says to you and I, Brent, you know what? Prepare for a market that's going to go lower, it, perhaps into next year. That's that's how I read the chart for the NDX 100. Did you have any questions about that yearly chart? No, that seemed to be, you know, that, that makes sense. And I know that we pretty much made that. I think a decent bottom there back in May. And that, Absolutely. You know, again, we'll see how much that, you know, turns out to be to the upside and then, you know, what's, what we do after that. But, yeah, th that's what I wanted to see, the, the bigger picture, what you're doing. Okay. And, and on the NQ chart that I've got, and I've got the continuous contract, it doesn't have enough data to generate that Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. But then if we – so if we're going to head lower – out here, what's really cool is whether we take a look at the NDX monthly chart or the NQ's monthly chart, there is a price level that 
where support really took place. Now, folks, when I talk about support, I'm really referring to the close of the candle session, the body of the candle. And on the NDX 100, the cash indice, that level, the breakout area is 12,208.39. Price in the month of uh, May tested and so far and rejected that uh, that breakout level. If we do see Brent to close below 12,208.39, that is a signal that we're headed lower. And the question or the answer of we're headed lower to where, the next price target on a monthly base would be 74.2397. Now, a number of things have to fail before we would get down there. In the case of the NQ, it was 12.179.50 that acted as support. And if that level fails, then its next monthly price target to the downside would be 73.19. Brent, any questions about these charts? We're going to go to a break here real quick, and we're going to come back. But any questions about the monthly time frame charts? No, that's really helpful, Steve. That gives us some levels to be watching. If that breaks, you know, and it needs to do it, I guess, for a a couple of months, but we'll, we'll just watch it at that point. So I Absolutely. guess I'll stay on through the break. Perfect. That would be great. So we'll be back with Brent in Martinez, California. We're taking a look at the big picture, folks. Steve Rhodes with TF and If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the Dow up 22, S and P 13, Nasdaq is up 31, and that's what we're uh, that's what we're discussing here right now is the Nasdaq 100. Now it's a weekly chart that I have up on my screen, Brent. And what I've taken us back to is the top in 2007. And it's a weekly time frame chart that we're taking a look at because weekly is the next time period that we're going to go to to analyze the charts and see what they're communicating to us. So in the case of the weekly time frame chart, this formed a Rhodes Mintum Indicator Top. It was also wave number seven, part of the Chapman wave, which went on to form really two bottom patterns on a weekly basis. 
One was a Gertley by pattern, which required an A to B equals C to the D. And that C to D extension was about a two points between 1.618 and 2.0. And that was uh, confirmed with a, a bull sash candle out here. That was the confirmation of that by the D point. It also formed a TD9 count bottom. That's that blue line that I've got across. That's the bar following. Oh, I take that back. Do I take that back? No, let me see here. Oh, 1682. I want to make sure that I'm speaking correctly. Yeah, okay. So it did form a TD9 count bottom. It was the bar following bar number nine out there. And that led to a, a move that uh, lasted uh, basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven weeks to the upside. And that uh, top, finally topped with a TD9 count on a weekly basis. And then it was a big swoosh to the downside. So that's what's going on. The reason that I went back to 2007 is because we have a similar pattern, Brent. We have a confirmed by the D point pattern. We do not have a TD nine count pattern, but we do have a by the D point pattern that was confirmed with this bull sash candle a few weeks ago. So that being said, then the next upside target where price could turn down, could turn down without forming any kind of a topping signal in the area for us to watch for the NDX 100 Brent on a weekly basis is 12, 9, 48, 75. Now that number is going to change as price moves up and down. But if we do get a close above that, that at least tells us about a further retracement out there. No pattern on a weekly basis other than the oscillator and change line right now uh, to suggest uh, um, for, to to help us identify uh, any kind of resistance or anything along those lines on the NDX 100. A quick peek. Any questions about the NDX or what I've, what I've mentioned so far? No, that's great. Thank you, Steve. Okay. So now let's go take a look at the N, uh, the NQ out here, see if there's anything else that uh, can assist us. And it's really got the same patterns. Now, in the case of the NQ, the resistance level is really up at the top of its uh, daily profile, though there's a new profile that's formed. I mentioned that earlier. But with regard to the old profile, which is still uh, which is what I've got on the white background chart, significant resistance at about the 12,995 level. And that's also that red oscillator and change line. So if price did close above that, then that's going to suggest a further rally. We'll have to come back and figure out, you know, where it might be headed to. Uh, the daily time frame chart out here in the NDX 100, there's a confirmed by the D point. And that was confirmed a few days ago with this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was a weekly chart I just went to. Oh, any questions, Brent, about the NQ chart before I go to the daily? Hello? Okay, I'm going to keep going. I hope that I'm uh, everybody can hear me. And if not, uh, then that's a bummer. Um, so I'm going to go with the daily time frame chart out here, and we'll expand out the daily. Um, so what's the daily telling us at this stage? There's a, an A to B equals CD to the downside. Um, in the NDX 100, it's just been a sideways move ever since the trading session of June the 2nd, I believe that was. Uh, was uh, I'm sorry, May, May 27th. May 27th. Really just a sideways move, if you will. So not really provide us with a ton of information. If we go over to the daily time frame chart here for the NQ, that's one that I said on my other charting system is attempting to form a new profile. But this 12,995 level, which also ties into that weekly oscillator and change line, that's your resistance level. And so, Brent, if we get above this, um, that's going to suggest higher price. And higher price to where? It could be the 14,389 level out there. Um, and that's what's coming from the NQ chart. So, Brent, are you still with us? or? Yeah, I dropped off and then I got oh, back. Okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> okay, appreciate that. So, you know, I guess bigger picture. So what we don't have going on at this stage, you know, so here's the dynamic, right? We do have a nice Gartley buy pattern that formed on the weekly chart, which could be a significant bottom. And it's the first Gartley buy pattern on a weekly basis that we've had since the 2009 bottom. However, if we step back for a moment and think about it, um, that's not really too unusual. You wouldn't really expect to necessarily get a weekly Gartley buy pattern unless you were in a bear market. You, you know what I mean? So that's kind of my take is that, okay, we got this Gartley buy pattern on a weekly basis. So it tells us that we should have some type of counter trend rally. And in order for that to occur, we're going to need to see some resistance levels fails. And I'll just make it easy in the NQ, that resistance level that we need to see fail is probably 12,973. And that's the top of the weekly profile. Until that happens, um, we've got to be concerned about the market could make a U-turn to the downside at any point in time, especially with price below the oscillator and change line on the uh, weekly time frame. Does that help? It does very much so, Steve. I really appreciate the, the longer-term charts and to see it 
you know, visually this helps. So that's what I wanted to have you do. And thank you so much. So, I didn't really get a chance to thank you on Thursday. We got, again, got cut off. And so thanks for Brent. helping me that day and for all the other times you've helped. And just have well, a, you're, a you're, wonderful you're, day you're, and you're, you're, enjoy the rest of your week. Sure, sure. Well, look, your call into the show is is all the thank you that uh, that I need out there. So I really appreciate that. And I know you do a lot of your own work out there. So does what we've just went through by interpreting what the charts are communicating to us, do they line up with what you're looking at? Do you see anything different? No, it makes total sense. And I mean, I your charting is great. And it just shows that, you know, until we do get through some of these levels that they do, I know we've been having some issues with on the S&P with that. You know, 4168, I think it got above it just briefly, you know, only a one day thing. And then it got, I think it even tested it again today. And it, is, it hasn't been able to get above that and hold above that. So, so far, that's another level that seems to be, you know, indicating that we might be, you know, playing this thing out. We'll see. You know, we just have to watch. Yeah. So the interesting thing is um, we're in a, what what I would call an unfavorable, we're, we're in the, in the unfavorable seasonal cycle, which is basically May through October, with inside that are favorable and unfavorable time periods. And we're in the unfavorable time period right now. So over the last 100 years or so, now not the NDX 100, it hasn't been around for 100 years, but if we did take a look at however long the NDX 100 has been around or just simply NASDAQ composite out there, um, and I've lost my train of thought. Where was I going with that? Uh, where was I going with that? We're in the unfavorable seasonal cycle, which should take us lower through about the uh, through for another two weeks. About the, about June 24th, 5th, or 6th is where we typically see a summer bottom, even during the uh, even during a uh, a presidential cycle period or a midterm cycle period out here. So we should see. This is the odd thing. If we if if we just keep like this and we we don't uh, make lower lows coming, you know, for the next couple of weeks out there, then that's going to put us into a favorable cycle that should take us up in through about the third week of July or so. So I just throw that out there, not to confuse anybody, but longer term, I'll just sum it up like this: If we see close in the NDX 100 below 12 208 39 and the NQ below 12 179 50, that helps answer our question, Brent, which is it's signaling that the markets want to head lower okay it's been an interesting market i have to say <laughs> i think my trades at least you know for the last i don't know going back a ways have been much shorter term i mean there hasn't yes. really been a necessarily a trending market not since we made that top back in january so it's been a lot of back and forth and there's trades on both sides you know so it makes it interesting it does. Hey, Brad, thanks again for the call. Much appreciated. And uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. That was Brent right. in Martinez, California. You bet. Thanks, Brent. We'll be right back. Thanks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I have been known to say a time or two, at least every day, is that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And uh, so Brent's segue is right into this next question out here, which is a longer term question, I, I believe. And this has come from Nick A. And Nick writes, this, good morning, Steve, and not really a radio show question, but we're going to take it anyways. But in anticipation of Friday's CPI numbers, would it be possible for you to somewhat estimate if inflation has peaked? Um, you know, uh, by uh, by analyzing commodities, et cetera, charts uh, by comparing year over year, just a thought. So let's try to answer some of Nicholas's question, because with regard to the CPI, you know, you got to be a genius of exactly what it is that uh, the, our government's going to put in there. But in general, uh, CPI is dealing with what housing transportation, and food and beverage. But, of course, there's a number of things that feed into those. So what I've got on my screen right now that we're taking a look at are the monthly time frame charts for some of those things that might be able to, and this is monthly charts. So we'll take a look at a bigger picture out here. We've gotten rid of some of the noise. So some of those things that would impact the consumer price index out here. Do I think, and so what do the charts tell us? Do we see any kind of long-term top out here? Well, in the case, let's start with lights we crude. I've got the continuous contract up here. And certainly there is an A to B equals CD pattern that has completed with a bearish shooting star. That bearish shooting star occurred during the month of, to complete that pattern, during the month of March of 2022. But notice that price is above the top of its profile. It's above its green oscillator and change line. So even though we've got a, a topping pattern, the overall message is neutral. But here's the deal. If price closes over the high from March of 2022, that's at 125.83. That pattern will get negated, Nicholas. And that says we head higher out here. So you ask, though, do we see some kind of a top? And the answer is we do in lights we crude, but it's really neutral, the signal on the monthly basis. It is not bearish. It is neutral out there. So, And I would have to say that based upon our current administration, that lights we crude. By the way, on Friday, so I, I think I mentioned to you one of the reasons I did the show early is because I I travel back and forth to uh, Naples pretty often, almost every weekend these days. And uh, in this case here, so I, I I needed enough gas to get over to Naples because over in Naples on the west side of the state, gas is cheaper. If you go up to Tampa, it's really cheap. Uh, but I think David has mentioned because of refineries, transportation, so forth out there. So. I loaded up, but not low, I put just enough in so that in case I got stuck on Hurricane or Hurricane Alley. On, on Friday, it was kind of Hurricane Alley, an alligator alley, that you know I'd have enough gas and wouldn't run out of gas out there. Now, I paid $6.19. And then when I get over to Naples, obviously, I, I fill up. And there, I was paying $5.40, which is kind of crazy. Um, you know, I mean, that's that's a that's a pretty significant. It's like a 12, 13, 14 percent um, move out there. But uh, overall, based upon the actions of our current administration out there, fundamentally, I don't see gasoline prices going down nor lights we crew. But uh, we'll take things one well, from a charting standpoint. 
you at least have your answer from a monthly basis on what's going on. Now, natural gas out here, having a nice day. We talked about it on a daily basis, got a TD9 count top, but we take a look at the monthly time frame. ain't no top here. So to the extent that natural gas is going to be a component of what comes out of the consumer price index, people say that inflation is topped. Well, certainly not from a natural gas standpoint, and I can't really say that it's topped from a uh, light sweet crude standpoint. Well, how about corn? You know, corn's a big part of uh, food prices out here. On a monthly basis, do we have any kind of a top? And the answer is we do not. Now, price may be pulling back. Maybe it's going to pull back to 688.42. That would just be a normal retracement. No topping signal. Re, uh, re, um, resistance stands at uh, 846.25. 846.25. If price clears that, then price is headed higher. But we don't have a top out here inside of uh, corn on a monthly basis. So, yeah, that's not telling me that uh, we've topped out uh, from a uh, commodity standpoint. Wheat out here. Does uh, wheat... I mean, I really got to stretch to come up with an A to B equals C to the upside, quite frankly, out there. But it's got a shooting start resistance, normal resistance, a breakdown resistance of 1294. Um, does not have a TD9 count topping pattern out there. Price above uh, its oscillator and change line and, uh, and the top of its profile. So prices hit some resistance. It's going to have to clear. Close above, really, 1376.25 to suggest, Nicholas, that we're headed higher out there. Um, and then I'd really hesitate on drawing in an A to B equals CD here. Just hardly any retracement whatsoever uh, out there. If we take a look at, uh, how about housing? So let's go take a look at housing stocks. So the two largest, I believe the two largest housing builders in the United States are D.H. Horton and Lennar out there. And in, in both of those, I won't, I won't expand the charts. I don't think that I need to. They're the bottom ones in the bottom right. DA Horton on a monthly basis forms a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now, any anytime we form a top out here, what we're looking for is price to at least get back to support. Doesn't necessarily have to form a, a bottoming pattern. We'd like that. Um, on the weekly bar on the monthly basis out here, both DA Horton and Lennar have Rhodes Mintum indicator tops. And where does price find support? In the case of DHI, it's at the bottom of its bullish structure profile. That's at 68.58. So if price can get above the center of this monthly profile. The center of this monthly profile would be at the 77.09 area. We're at 76.53. You close above 77.09, price is going to head to 89.45. Now, has housing topped? It could just be a consolidation pattern. We'd have a different outlook if price closed below the bottom of that profile, but it has not done that. So maybe we just have a consolidation. Lennar, price came back to the bottom of its profile. It was a bear structure profile, but still price found support at the 7378 area. Now, if price closed above 8606, that'll become monthly from a monthly standpoint, bullish, but send price up to its oscillator and change line at the 9560. So has housing topped? It had a short-term top with regard to those two builders, but prices also come back and found support. So with regard to your question, regardless of what the government tells us on Friday out there with regard to CPI, was it, no, that was Jobs Friday, last Friday. Um, with regard to light sweet crude, neutral. Natural gas, bullish. Corn, bullish. Wheat, neutral to bullish out here. And in the case of housing, you know, the tops pulled back and found support, and so price can certainly move higher from here. So, Nicholas, I hope that helps you out with regard to that question. Thanks so much for writing in. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Hector and Patty. And Hector wants to take a look at Google for the weekly time frame. Coach us through this move. You load it up twice during May, as you know. I think that we may have the chance to be in a free trade of a lifetime. Election dollars driving uh, Google profits and so forth. So uh, that's the fundamental picture. Let's go change over to a, a different set of charts out here. If you give me a moment to get them, we'll get to our, oh, that did not mean to do that. Okay, uh, no problem. This is going to uh, populate. Well, this is populating. Let me go to my three time frame charts out here for Google. Google, which did a uh, split. No, that was Amazon did the split today, not Google. Make sure you were, you were talking about Google, right? Let me just make sure here. Don't want to screw that up. Uh, yeah, it was Google. Okay, so we're going to get Google. I know you've got the index charts here populating. I was going to do that during the quick breakout here. So let me get back to our multi time frame charts and put up uh, Google, G O O G. And uh, so Google right now is trading out at 23.55. There is a new weekly profile, Hector and Patty, uh, just forming this week. 
support. You can't see it right now, but support. I'm going to give it to you, so to jot down on your pad of paper. 222855. It's bullish in structure, so the center is at 2290. This tells me that Google should make a move to the top of its daily profile because price trade above the center. Resistance at the top of that, a, week, a weekly profile, my apology, weekly profile, 241293. The bottom, 222855. The top, 241293. And that's where price should head to. Price closes above that. That's what you're looking for. But we'll be right back. We'll further, further analyze these charts. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Google. This is for Hector and uh, Patty out here. And, and Hector really wanted me to focus on the weekly time frame chart and pull it apart. So here's what we know about Google. One, on a weekly basis, it formed a Gartley buy pattern. What's a Gartley buy pattern? Gartley buy pattern is when you have a nice move higher, such as Google. That's coming off the March uh, 20, uh, 20 lows out here. And then you get an A to B equals CD down to the downside. In this case, you're on a weekly basis. It was about a 1 to 1 1.272, 1 1.618. Now, A to B equals CD patterns, folks. They complete when at the, at the pr price projection areas when they generate a bullish reversal candle. That's how we know that at least the market is attempting to form a bottom. Well, in the case of Google, three weeks ago, it did it. <clears throat> nice bullish hammer candle. Now, Gartley patterns 
have five different potential outcomes. The first three are retracement levels, 0 0.382, 0 0.618, 0 0.786 out there. The fourth retracement level is 100% move of move, meaning it gets back to its highs out there. And the fourth is that the actual Gartley buy pattern turned into a brand new A to B equals C to the upside. Now, on the weekly time frame, as I mentioned, uh, Hector, you've got resistance, a new profile, and that's up at the 2412 level, 241293 to be specific. Turns out that the 0.382 retracement, I'm not showing on this chart, of this A to B equals CD to the downside is 2425. So that is when you've got an oscillator and change line at the 2412 level right now. So it's really clear. Price is going to should trade up into resistance. If it can clear resistance out there, then you've got a positive and would suggest a move, perhaps the 0.618 retracement level, 2660. So, um, you know, uh, that, that's what I see in the market. We took a look at the same, a similar A to B equals CD to the downside inside the NDX 100. Uh, at this stage here, my thoughts are that this is just a counter trend move and that we had lower. And in the case of Google, I would say if you close below that hammer candle of 2044.16, that, uh, that will be its message. But price should get up into that 2425 level. So I hope that helps you out, Hector. Folks, thanks so much for joining us here on Magical Monday. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us home. I'll be back with you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magic.